make money off of. And I know you seen a lot of businesses come with you and try to sell you stuff and tell you this and that. And they're like, oh, you can make so much amount of money and you could do this and you could do that. You can go on trips. You could take vacations. And so you're so excited. Um, the price is not too much for you. It seems like they're genuine. And then you get in it and then it just changes the whole and just do a whole 360 yeah <laughs> and you're like okay I thought it was this this and that but it might not be the business itself it may be the person or persons that you are dealing with they have the vision in mind but you're not in it you're there to make this the vision even I wouldn't say clearer, but more crispier, more better. Like how you fix a screen. It's a little fuzzy. Remember back in the day you had antennas and you have to screw the thing in to make it clear. Well, that's pretty much what it is. And once you're done with it, you go back and sit down and watch the TV. Yeah, it's only a tool. And so they see the vision of the whole movie. They see the vision of whatever show they're watching. Same thing with this thing here. My second one, desire to be admired, is a big one because they attract the right followers to manipulate. And the dangerous thing about this whole thing is that the manipulation that a narcissist has 90% of the time, they don't even know that they're doing that because they have been doing it for so long and getting away with it for so long and not being confronted or maybe have been confronted, which we'll, we'll talk about when not being able to accept criticism. Um... It's hard to um, get through to the other person that they may be offensively manipulating you. So that desire to be a mire could be diminished. And so you're going to have a problem there. It might be some snapping and going off or an angry or mad or a upset person um, in terms of that admiration because they need that. That's their supply. And so when you take that away from them, you're going to have a fight. Just know that. Um, three, unable to take criticism, which what I just said, that admiration is taken away. Oh, my God. And then they can't handle criticism. That's taken away from their light of who they want to be and who they admire by. And the leader gets angry when you disagree with an idea. You know, they might block you off of Facebook. They might delete your number out their phone. Now they're all of a sudden they're, you're, they're not your mentor anymore or you thought that they were. And now they're showing you that they're not because you disagree with something or you stuck up for yourself about something. And so now by you being fresh into business or fresh into leadership, you blame the business. But really, the focus should be should be the person that you're working with, not necessarily the business. And so number four, inability to listen. Are we listening for cues because they easily become distracted by outside conversations and missing out on important info? Like, especially if you're talking to you, one of your teammates or upline leaders or whatever, your coaches or whatever, and they're on the phone and you're trying to tell them something, something that's, you know, concerning you or it's going to better the team, you know, and they're just not engaged in the conversation. I've witnessed that a lot with a lot of people that I've worked with in the past, not the people that I work with now, the people that I work with now, you know, are really, really who as I believe is placed in my life for the blessing that they're supposed to be. Now, not saying that we don't have our ups and downs, but we're able to come to a common denominator on what's best for both of us or both groups or whatever. And so we're able to talk about it and put criticism out there where nobody's getting in their feelings and nobody's criticized or feeling like a certain type of way in a negative way. You know, yeah, this may be a good idea, but I don't think it'd be a good idea to implement it now. Those type of conversations instead of going off the band handle, you wasn't listening in the first place. And now, you know, then you're, you're, Based off the misunderstanding, now you're angry at the other person. So again, um, number five, again, you know, like I said in the beginning, building those relationships is very crucial. And so you like them. They like you until you get to know them or until they get to know you. Maybe they can't handle what's going on. Life coaching is not just about doing business. I believe 
Life coaching is about getting into the business of someone you're working with in their whole life, like their family life. What do they do for fun? Things like that. What are their um, worldviews, their beliefs? Um, you know, then comes the dream board where what do you see yourself in the next five years if you could design your life yourself? Have you ever thought about those things? Like what are your kids future looks like? Those types of conversations. And so if you don't have those, then you really I don't feel I will be close to someone I just do business with. That's all I'm going to look at you as. But if I can come to you as a friend, I would share more with you and we can grow more better as partners because we know we'll makes each other's tick, if that makes sense. And then number six, consistency. You know, you seeing this person getting bored with you because you're not as new as you were when you first came into the business. And so you may become a burden or something. You may lack something like um, being able to get around and things like that. Well, go half on an Uber. Like, it's not that serious. Like, why people have such a hard time just being honest about things, you know? <laughs> But that's the way it is. And we got in live in the chat room. I am Jackie B. Let's welcome her to the show, y'all. Good you can stop by. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah. And yeah, if you could put your website down in the chat room and also to that ball that's coming up. I've seen it on Facebook. I'm going to let you tell it because I don't want to tell too much tea. You know what I'm saying? With my big mouth. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, just for those that are stopping in just now, we're talking about, you know, narc leaders. You know what I'm saying? It's all about them. You get in the business. It's all exciting. It's all great. And then you get in and it's not so great because the people that hyped you up and that put a certain uh, persona in front of you. Once you get into the business, that persona changes. So we was looking at uh, 10 traits to look for in narcissism and leadership because it's not just in love and relationships. It's all over the spectrum. It's in people's families. It's in people's careers. It's in people's, you know, personal space in their brain. Like this stuff just never ends. (laughs) And it's so irritating, especially when you don't know what's going on with this other person because you thought they were one way and then they seemed another way. And you're like, okay, wait a second. I thought, wait a <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, seven would be, um, you know, empire building. You know, it seems more interesting than more platforms without connecting with people you know they want to shove all the stuff that they doing and this and that and then when you present an idea it's kind of like no answer um yeah that's great and then you don't hear from about a couple weeks couple months couple years because <laughs> <laughs> you know they want to be on all different platforms they want to tell you which one is best but then they don't want to tell you how it would benefit and already what y'all are already doing I mean, I, I, my thing is this. I'm cool with partnering up with different things because I'm open to making extra money. Don't get me wrong. But I got to look at what I really want to focus on right now is what I got going on right now working already. Because if I can't get that together and I'm passionate about what I'm doing right now, then how is that going to incorporate into what I'm doing right now? So it's kind of like I'm, ha- I'm back to the first appointment that I made with you. Because at that first appointment, that was something that we should have discussed. But then you got all this stuff going on with you. You really don't have a a leeway of trying to make it where it can fit in your schedule. So you're all over the place. So you expect everybody to understand that you're all over the place and they're not or they're not trying to be. And so that's a lot. (laughs) And I don't like that. Um, Lack of empathy cares only when you make them money. You know, if you're not making no money, then we're not speaking to you and we don't have anything to say. I mean, you know, I mean, especially with names list, call, get on the phone and call with your partner. If they're shy, they're nervous about calling, call them or text. You know what I'm saying? You got thousands of friends on Facebook, thousands of friends on Twitter, thousands of friends on YouTube. Refer some people because it's somebody in every group that like to talk. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it's no excuse but that's how I think about it I mean you could think differently or whatever 
But and then we got competitive, you know, number nine. Congrats comes after you gratify them. They can't be happy for you. They got to win in order for you to be clapped for. You know, you go up there and you getting recognized and they just sit there. They don't take no picture and none of that. But when they get up there, oh, you don't take no picture of them. It's going to be something else. <laughs> you know, that's something else to look for. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then number 10, finally, not a good mentor. Not interested in you. And then they lie about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ask you, you know, hey, listen to my show. Come on at 9 p.m. Central Monday through Saturday. And then I got spiritualities at six uh, Sunday, 6 p.m. Central on Sunday. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to write it down. Matter of fact, I'm going to put it in my calendar, blah, blah, blah. And then when I get on, what I do? You tell them everything, what you do. You give them the app and all that information. And then the night come, it's time to get on. You hitting them up, you calling maybe a half an hour early just to see. You don't get no answer. The text is stopped. Hey, wait a minute. Okay, they might be busy or whatever. Something came up. Boom. And then it happens again and again and again. And then the more you get to know the person, the more you know that it's not by mistake. It's on purpose almost. Because the conversation that you have once you see that person or once you talk to that person on the phone. You're like, oh. As you listen it. See, it's so important to listen. And then it's so important to listen. <laughs> if that makes sense. So when we come back, we're going to do some EDU. Um, how to deal with the narcissistic leader at www.incinc.com. So stay tuned, y'all. It's getting juicy. Problem. I'm not 